so we'll start about uh, building business model and mapping layer today so last class we pulled in a few tables to our physical layer Chan okay. Chanakya? yes yeah. go ahead Chanakya? yeah i can't record the session this session one minute i think i didn't share my screen. yeah neither can i yeah yes yes yeah. no i can't yeah okay so uh, last uh, last session we pulled few tables into physical layer okay one minute So we saw, uh, we pull different tables called D1 calendar and D1 customer. D1 product. And one more table is D1 orders. So all the tables are pulled into physical layer. Today, We will see how to build business model and mapping layer. How to give the names of each tables as uh, business uses them. How to rename the attributes in the tables in business familiar terms. Okay. How to define the logical joins between each tables and uh, how to remove unwanted columns uh, from the logical tables and how to rename the logical column using a rename visa so we will see different topics okay so we will look into different uh, concepts in vmm layer and we will try to have uh, we will try to create few measures in fact table okay we will try to set up aggregation rule for that okay so we'll just see how it can be achieved now open the rpd that we created in the last session in offline mode that is coxa.rpd provide the password as welcome one so now we have your physical tables and your physical joins readily available in the physical layer of your repository now we'll start with business model and mapping layer so we have a topic called creating the business model so you can see that you created physical layer of the repository you have some theory here you can go through it you are now ready to begin building the business model in the business model and mapping layer of the repository the business model and mapping layer of the administration tool defines the business model of data and specifies the mapping between business model and the physical layer schemas. Business mod model are also referred to as logical models or dimension models. So you can not only call a particular business model as a business model, you can call it as a logical model or you can call it as a dimensional model. Okay. Now, business models are always dimensional. Unlike objects in the physical layer, which reflect the organization of the data sources, the business model and mapping layer can contain one or more business models. Each business model contains logical tables, columns and joins. So it is not a rule like it can have only one business model. It can have multiple business models. Each business model have, may have different type of logical tables and different dimensions and facts as well. Okay. And there are two main categories of logical tables. One is your fact table and one more is your dimension table. In your physical layer, your physical layer will cannot differentiate between your fact table and dimension table. Because directly it is metadata of your database. All tables, is, uh, all tables are imported into your physical layer. Giants are defined between them. And you will be knowing what is a fact and what is a dimension whatever is on the inside of the relation you think it you make it as a fact and whatever uh, is containing a primary key mostly you refer it as a dimension table but in business model and mapping layer the tool can clearly differentiate what is a dimension and what is a fact now 
logical fact table contains the measures by which uh, abc gaza its business operations and performance logical dimension tables contains the data used to qualify the facts okay uh, this practice uh, you will be developing a particular business model you will pull in all the tables and we will see how we can model our business model and mapping layer okay So we opened our RPD in offline mode. So since uh, we didn't deploy the RPD into the application yet, we will open the RPD in offline mode next. We will create a business model called as supplier sales. So from here in business model and mapping layer, we will refer the terminology that is most familiar with our business. Okay. So how do you do that? Click here right click on this in business model and mapping layer there are options like new business model paste and check consistency just click on new business model so uh, give the name of the business model as supplier sales leave other options blank as of now let it be disabled we will enable when the, once the consistency is checked okay now click ok so this will create a business model and you can see that this is grayed out there is a red cross mark on this that means still this is not available for queries even if you deploy this rpd there is no use because still you didn't pull in anything and you didn't even check your consistency so it will uh, even if you load the uh, load or deploy this rpd into your application this will not work properly as expected okay next now create the logical tables in the supplier to schema. So how do you do that? Just select, hold your control button, select all the four, just drag and drop them to into your business model supplier sales. You can see that D1 calendar to D1 customer to D1 products and D1 orders to are being pulled into your business model and mapping layer. And you can notice. Sankhya. Yeah. Sankhya. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, actually, Smita is not getting some problem. She can't hear the any voice. Um, link showing that some expired of the link like that. It's showing to him to her. Okay. Uh, she she is using the correct link. I think she should not have any issue. But but she is in the class. But she can't hear anything. That's what she said to me. Okay. We, uh, Smita, can you restart your machine and re uh, reconnect once? Because nothing from our end. We cannot do anything. It should be from your system only. It's saying that uh, some uh, the link got expired. Uh, ask your organizer to update it like that, showing to her. No, how can the link be expired? It is just created one week back, and uh, everyone we are in the link, right? It is working properly. Yes. Right? Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. link issue. Okay. Okay, okay. okay. I'll, uh, I'll ask her to shut down the computer now on the computer. Sure, okay. sure. Okay. Fine. Oh. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so. Or by mistake, she's using an earlier link or something. Yeah, but uh, see, she's using earlier link. She cannot be in this uh, link, right? She cannot be in this session, right? Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, so this me this meeting ID is one double four nine zero seven nine seven three. This is unique. So obviously this should be different. She she is using the correct link, but uh, even I'll have some audio issues sometimes. Maybe even she had the same thing. Okay, fine. So when you hold your control button and bring in all the four tables in the physical layer to your business model and mapping layer. You can see that all the four tables have been uh, present in business model and mapping layer and you can observe a hash symbol on your fact d1 address 2 table. That means your business and ma model and mapping layer is clearly identifying fact d1 address 2 table as a fact table. That is the reason since it is present on the inside of the relation it is clearly telling this is a fact table and by default this uh, this is giving the this is identifying this table as a
so this is identifying this table as a fact table okay so we will see how to remove the unwanted columns and how to rename all the columns in business model and mapping layer okay next Sanakya, you uh, uh, drag the aliases or the original uh, tables from the yes, physical yes, layer? Yes, yes, yes. I mean you selected. Exactly, because I don't want to use any of my base tables in the joins or in the corresponding business model or presentation layer. I want to use all alias tables only. Because alias tables only I joined, I joined right? I didn't join any base okay, table. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't okay. join any base okay. table. So all the alias tables are joined. Everything I am making changes on the alias tables only. I just, base, okay. base table is just for my reference. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Now we will rename the logical tables in the business model to ma to make them more meaningful. So instead of DIM calendar two, let me re rename it as DIM time. So how can you rename, your renaming is done either, you can just press your F2 button on the keyboard or right click on this, go to rename, this is one more way or double click this, go to your general section, you can rename here also. So there are lot, lot, multiple ways of renaming your table, you can rename however you want. So I am renaming this as DIM time, click OK, next and rename your customer product and fact, fact sales table as well ok so your DM customer rename it and DM product can rename it and your fact sales as well Now we will delete the unwanted columns uh, from our table fact sales that are really not required. We have something called actual extent, let it be there. We don't have CM, we don't want CM dollars, customer key, period key, product key, null field we don't want. Let this be there. So all these columns we don't want for analysis as of now. So select all of them, right click and delete and it will ask do you want to delete the objects? Yes. So only four, you are not deleting anything, anything from your physical layer, still your physical layer has all the columns that are required. So in future, if you want a particular column for analysis, you can just drag and drop to this uh, table this will automatically create a column for you and you can even pull it to presentation layer and use it for analysis. As of now, you don't want those columns, so just delete them. Whenever you want it, we can use them for our analysis. Okay, next. Similar way, you can uh, expand your timetable and delete the unwanted columns. So you have something called Chinese year, Chinese month and all, so all these are not required. You can delete them and day ago, month ago, year ago and all are not required. Order day in year, week number in year is also not required. So all this Muslim day in month, Muslim month, Muslim year. So all these unwanted columns you can delete off. Okay. So whatever is required for our analysis, we will keep it. Now, we will see uh, how to use the rename uh, wizard. There is something called rename wizard. Instead of, you can see, you can right click and rename the column. Instead of this, you have one more approach for rename. 
So even that approach you can use it. So you'll just see how to rename using a rename wizard. So how to rename all the columns in a single shot using rename wizard. Okay. Now from DIM product also we have some unwanted columns like PZ code delete it. From customer you can delete rep number and factor. Chanakya, what is the key that shows primary key or what? The key uh, I'll explain you about the key. Don't worry, I'll explain you about the key. You can think that that as a primary key itself. Okay, that will that is the most detailed level key in the logical table. If you don't have key in the logical table, consistency will fail. That is the reason. By default, whenever I prove uh, from physical layer, right, whatever is defined as the primary key here will become a logical key in the business model and mapping layer. Okay. And this is the primary key which are used for the joints also? Yes, yes. This is the primary key whatever we use for joints also in the physical layer. Okay. okay. And we can't delete this? Uh, you should not delete this. You can delete this. Okay. You can delete anything. But you should not delete this. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. Fine. Now, uh, let us uh, uh, rename the columns in your time logical table using your rename wizard. Okay, so there is something called tools in your RPD. So instead of manually renaming, there is a, a rename wizard also. So we will see how to use it. Tools, there is something called utilities and there is something called rename wizard. Click on execute, your rename wizard is open. Click on business model and mapping layer, supplier sales, DIM time. So add, select all the values and add it. So you can select all the values and add it. Click on next. So first thing is wherever YM, MMDD is there, there you can give it as day. So wherever YYMMDD is there, I will replace it with, it, it with as day and I want it to be case sensitive I want everything in small letters only so I'm just adding this so you can see that change occurrence of YYMMDD into day so wherever YYM if there is any column called YYMMDD we will have uh, the value change to day. Okay. Now next. Month code should be changed to month code. Okay. So month code I am converting into month code. Next. Chankya. Yeah. Still audio is not working for Smita. Hello. Anybody able to hear me? Smita. Hi Smita. Yes. Hello. Hi. Anybody able to hear me? Yeah, yeah. We are able to hear you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hello. 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 Anybody able to hear me? Hello. Hello. Chanakya? Yeah, yeah. We are able to hear you, Smita. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, I, I'll okay. I'll keep you. I'll keep you on mute. Just take that one. Okay. So uh, now we are uh, changing uh, YYMMD to into day month code into month code value. Slowly we'll see how to convert even other values as well. Okay. Now wherever we see full Gregorian date, this should be converted to date. So change specified text find full Gregorian date and replace it with date.
मिक्स्ड Yes, Mita, yes. Database is working, Smita. Okay. Next. Select uh, first letter of each word to capital. Add. And one more thing is all text lowercase, uh, uh, all text should be in lowercase. So add, add it. Okay. So just click next. You can see this all columns, whatever columns will be affected, all those will get, uh, will be listed here. So when you just click on finish, you can see that DIM time, your values changed accordingly as day in month, day in year, your YYMMDD has changed to day, day name, month, month in year, month code and year. Okay. <coughs> it will follow the sequence or it will take all the things? Uh, it didn't follow any sequence, right? Only just uh, character matching. Wherever it is matching, so that value will be replaced. Like uh, you click, initially you clicked all in lower cases and the first letter should be in capital. So it has to follow because if I put uh, first letter in capital and follow yeah, it by all. Oh yes, okay. That sequence, yes, yes. That sequence is very, very important. Yeah, okay. Yeah, otherwise, uh, next, if the operation is performed later, what happens? Everything, it will try to convert to lower case. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, Sorry, what is the Gregorian date? Uh, Gregorian date, I am just uh, using it as a date value. This is normal date value itself. Oh, okay. This is normal date. The English calendar will usually be called as uh, Georgian. Yeah. yeah. Georgian date, that, that one, yeah, so 1999 and that. So we are just renaming it in business layer as date. This is normal date itself. Oh, okay. Okay. And this is uh, renaming your logical columns using your rename wizard. Okay, you are not manually, you are uh, manually doing nothing here. You are just uh, replacing whatever values you want for your columns and just running the wizard it is changing all the values for you automatically. Now, in the same way, we will rename the columns in the fact table as well as the other tables, customer and products also. So, for dollars, let me rename it as dollars. So, here there is minor correction. Here, I don't have column called dollars, but there is something called ACTL extend. This will act as dollars for you. Okay, so you can just rename this column as dollars. And net weight shift as net weight shift. And units ordered as units ordered. So you are just making it more meaningful. That's it. You are not changing anything. Still this will refer to your column itself. Your physical column itself. Rename control V. So unit shift. So, when I right click on this, go to query related objects, physical column, there is something called query related objects, it will, it, it, it will show you what are all the dependent columns, it is, uh, what are all the columns it is depend, dependent upon or where it is derived from exactly. So, when you go for query related objects, from, from which physical column it has been derived, you can see there is something called unit shift. When you click on go to, this will take you to the corresponding physical table. So this is the unit shift column which is being used for this column. This is the column which is used for this column. Like this. So even if you don't know, when you open a particular RP, just right click on it, go to query related objects, you can see presentation column, what you want, business model mapping layer, which column it is dependent, physical column, which column it is dependent, and so on. Okay. So you can check like that and you can just uh, navigate to that column in physical or presentation layer from your BMW. Or it is vice versa. If you want to see this, this where it is used, you can go to query related objects, business model and mapping layer, you want a logical column. So when you click logical column, go to 
you can see that this unit shape column is being used here. Okay, fine. Next, we will rename uh, customer columns as address. Uh, Janikya, when you are using that, um, uh, this rename wizard, right? Yeah. We name, uh, we used in the previous one. This one is like a copy of like the uh, all should be in lowercase and the first should be in initial yeah. capital. Can yeah. I copy those uh, from the um, whatever rename we have done it uh, dimension time and rename, copy it and paste it in this uh, wizard like rename wizard for this dime customer? You can do that. You can do that, but I didn't copy it, right? Yeah. It won't give us select rules or some such. No, you have to do all these steps properly. Okay. Okay. Next and next. You want to say here, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I can select it from the previous one and do. Like okay, change specify text might be a bit difficult. But all other things I can just copy it. Yeah, you can do all text lowercase, add it, click next, click finish. So all text will go to your lowercase. Yeah, think that now like once you have made it uh, for this, I, I copy the uh, rename wizards, whatever I have added. And then paste okay, it okay, the for, next, uh, okay, for time, whatever you have added, the, you want to do that to the customer also, right? Yeah, the next table also. While selecting the columns, you want the same constraints that you write, right? No, no, no. You have to each time, each time when you run, you have to do it uh, manually, separately. Yeah. So if, if I am not confused about what query, I mean, what I have given in the previous one. Okay, for time, right? Time or whatever it is. No, no. And can I give uh, more than, I can select more than two columns or I can select only one uh, one table, sorry? You can select any number of columns. That's up to you. Yeah, like uh, more than uh, two, one table I can do? Yeah, more than, see, for whole uh, this one, DM customer, DM product also you can add. Okay, okay. You can add, expand this, you can add all these. Okay, you can add all the columns in the business model and mapping layer. You can do that. Okay. okay, then I can just give them the same command at one go. At one go. Yeah, but see, for a few things it might, you don't have underscores and all for a few things and all, right? So, you want to change other names also. So, you are not doing it on the one go. Just to be on safer side, you are going uh, renaming for each and every table separately. Okay. So for customer, let the address be renamed as address. I'll do it rename with the execute. first letter of each thing capital now city as city district as district name as customer so name is completely changed as customer right and new key as customer key and phone as phone region as region root code as root code Sales rep as sales rep. Okay, so you renamed all the things for zip code. You can just remove this. Delete this. Use zip code. Okay, so you renamed all the columns in your customer dimension table accordingly. 
however you want okay like address city district and you can see that how how however columns you may have been populated query related objects physical column go to so from dm d1 customer to your region column is built pull to, pull to your region okay so you can see how uh, your values are getting populated accordingly similar way we will try to rename the columns that are present in our products table okay we rename time we renamed uh, customer we renamed fact sales so the only table that is remaining is product so we will try to rename all the values which are present in our product as well okay now date code can be renamed as date code and generic description can be given as generic package weight can be renamed as package weight package code can be renamed as your package code and product key and you can rename it specific and subtype code as subtype code and supplier code and one more you have as type code so all the columns have been renamed next now we will see logical keys for different tables for different logical dimension tables okay just a second so we'll just observe uh, logical keys for different tables and how the logical joins have been defined between each and every table when we pulled all the tables from our physical layer okay now here when you double click on your customer table there is something called keys here you can note it down that when you select here you have customer key column as the key column and if you want you can select any of the column as a key column but it is not advisable you have to select always a key which can uniquely identify a particular table so since customer key is your primary key table primary key column you are making that as a key column for your logical table okay and for fact sales you can see that there won't be any keys but foreign keys uh, uh, nothing will be there as of now because i deleted all the key columns from my fact sales right so now you can see business model diagram whole diagram you can see that whatever joins i defined in my physical layer the same thing is been carried here the only difference is it don't have any expression here your logical join or your business model join or your uh, complex join we call it as complex join or logical join or uh business model and mapping join anything okay so what you can do you don't have any join expression defined in your complex join or logical join okay the same physical join it will just the oracle bi server will just know that it is a fact table and this is a dimension table but through which columns it is join it doesn't know it goes to your physical layer refers there take the join expression and get the results okay right now you can uh, you have saw, you saw the business model diagram next we will see how to create simple measures in our fact table okay since 
I told you that our fact table is nothing but which contains measures that are required for our analysis. Okay. Now you should have an aggregation function defined on your fact table columns or your measures. We discussed while discussing about DW concept, we uh, discussed about something like uh, additive facts, semi-additive facts, and non-additive facts. As of now, uh, don't worry about the terminology, but think, uh, keep in mind that we have to define an aggregation rule for a particular column. So how do you do that? Double click on your columns, there is something called aggregation. So it is mandatory that for your measure, you have to define an aggregation content or aggregation. Okay. So aggregation rule will be sum across all the dimensions for this. For net weight ship also it will be sum. For units orders orders also it will be sum. For unit shipped also it will be sum. So if you across any dimension that you select, this will be summed up. Suppose say if you region and if you select a unit order, so in a in a region how many number of units are ordered, everything will get summed up and the results will get displayed. Okay, fine. Next, we will see how to build a presentation layer in the repository. So after that, we will uh, we'll check how to check the consistency. Okay. Now, what is presentation layer? Presentation layer is nothing but how a developer or how a user sees a particular subject area in the application that is being developed. Okay. So, so when you de develop your uh, RPD, so how, how you want to look at your subject area? So the same way you, you should be defining it in your presentation layer. Okay. So how do you do it? The same way how you created a subject area, you can just go here, go to supplier sales, just do one thing, drag and drop this into your presentation layer. This will create a subject area. Like DIM time, DIM customer, DIM product, fact sales, everything will be present. Uh, how one, uh, however, you created it in your business model mapping layer and here you don't have anything called joins. There won't be any presentation joins because it is only the tables that are viewed here and how you want to view them in which which order you want to view them everything can be and what are all the columns suppose you don't want your customer key here so there is no need of your customer key for any analysis right so delete your customer key it doesn't make any difference here only your business model and mapping layer should have it fact sales you don't have any key columns and if you don't want any other columns you can keep deleting them okay now so you can see the properties of your supplier sales there is something called your presentation tables you can order them however you want like dim time can be below dim customer can be on the top suppose if you want dim customer on the top just click on the up, uh, up arrow button it will take your dim customer onto the first in the list and then dim time. just click on okay you can see that your DIM customer has been present in the first. Okay. And don't use any dollar or percentage symbol with your presentation table names or your supplier sales names because while formulating your logical SQL, your presentation table names or subject area name is used. So if you want to avoid any failure in the query, you just don't give any your table names or your subject area names with special symbols like dollar, percentage or escape character or backslash or something like that. Don't give anything like that. And there is something called permissions button here. That, that means you can define permissions to a particular role. If you want to restrict a particular subject area to be viewed by all the users, you can even restrict it. Okay. Uh, Chanakya, the dollar sign and all, I can use it on the column as a column heading? Uh, don't use it on anything that is better actually because even your column headings in your select will be used. 
So whenever you write your telephone query, if you use your dollar symbol or escape character, it will fail. Okay, since it is your Oracle database, it doesn't allow all those special characters, right? In the column names. So it fails. So better try uh, avoiding uh, special characters in your column names. Okay. So then we have to use the whole select price in dollars. We can't change, like we can't use the symbol. We have to write it in words. Yeah, yeah, you have to write it like that. Symbol, if you want, you can uh, give it in your presentation application itself. You have something called dollar symbol there. There you can use the symbol and uh, append it with the value. Okay. There specifically for, cur for currencies, you have all the symbols in application. Okay. In the application, when you see, I will explain you. Don't worry. Hmm? Okay. Now, so you can see that uh, this is not displaying any custom display name. The display name is still from your presentation layer. If you want to give a, a custom display name in presentation layer alone, you can do that. But my advice is don't change anything here in presentation layer specifically because Suppose say your customer table is being used in 10 subject areas. As of now, only one subject area is there like supplier chain. Suppose say you have 10 subject areas. And all your customer table is present in all the 10 subject areas. And you are changing your customer table column name, one of the column name from address to billing address. Suppose if you change this, rename. You see that presentation layer column automatically changed because this column is referencing your business model and mapping layer column. That is the reason your column has been automatically renamed. Okay. So make sure that you are not giving a custom name in presentation layer alone. Try to refer, uh, let it refer a logical column. So once you change all the 10 places wherever it is being used will get affected. Okay. So you don't have any issues while making a new analysis. Okay. Next. So we can just go through the theory and what are all the options present and then slowly we will explore all the options. Now put your customer on the top next time and then product and then your tax sales. Okay. Next. So in DM customer we will see how to uh, rearrange your columns like this. So how go here to customer, so go to columns and in the general section you can see still this is a column name, uh, this is the name which is coming from your table. You can rename this to your customer And your region, uh, you can keep it on the top, like your region. You can put region on the top, district and sales rep. Next, customer address and phone. Customer address and phone. Then city, state and zip code. And next, let a root code be on, at the end. And customer key you want it at the end, right? So just drag and drop customer key. So customer key will be present at the end. Now you can see that your columns are being rearranged. How you want to see them, those can be rearranged. Next. Uh, and for district, you can give so I'm deselecting use logical column name. I'm just giving sales district. Click OK. So click. See this. Your previous name district have been saved as a alias. 
So what, what does this alias tab does? All your previous versions of your names, however you changed, everything will be stored here. Okay. As of now, just keep it use logical column name. Click OK. So you can see that your sales district have been present again because you renamed this to say I can delete this. Just click OK. So your district is present here. Okay. So aliases will just contain the history of your name changes. So whatever you, uh, name you use from the beginning and how you kept changing this, everything will be stored. Okay. Now you can delete customer key and product key from your product table so that already we did it off. So for product I already deleted my product key because I don't want any key information in my presentation layer because you won't be interested in making analysis using your key columns. Okay. You can rename your customer table to customer. And your time table to time. And your product table to product. Okay, so you can rename all the uh, tables in presentation layer with more meaningful names. So however you understand, you can, so however you understand, you can rename them accordingly. Okay, fine. And next, we will see how to validate a repository. Okay. So as of now, till now, I am just uh, saving the changes but not checking any consistency. For your RPD to successfully work or to successfully uh, get deployed in the application and start displaying the results, so what you have to do? You have to check your consistency in your RPD. So what is the consistency means? Consistency means that whatever the development, whatever the changes you did to your RPD or whatever the development that you did is proper. If, the, if the something is not proper or if something is, uh, if something is errored out, your rep consistency manager will display all the error messages as well as warnings as well as best practices for you. There are three types of messages there. All those three things will be displayed. Okay, now we will see in consistency manager how to do that okay now just you can here also you can do there is something called check consistency otherwise you can go to file there is something called <coughs> check global consistency or else you can even press control k Business model is consistent. Do you want to make it available for queries? Just observe the change, how it happens. If I click on yes, you see this. This symbol has changed from grayed out color to green color. That means my RPD is proper now. I can start making the changes. In what scenarios this consistency fails? Let me create some inconsistent scenarios myself so that I will display you the warnings and error messages. Now, as of now, we have your business model and mapping layer. Open the business model diagram. Remove specific join. Suppose, suppose from fact sales to customer, you can delete this join. Just close it and save. Try to save it. And do you want to check global consistency? Yes. Business model is not consistent. Do you want to market unavailable queries? Yes. So I don't want to save. So what is the error message it is showing? Error. Logical table, DIM customer. The logical table, supplier sales, DIM customer is not joined to any other logical table. So, one, case one is when you left your logical dimension table, left alone without joining to any other fact source or maybe dimension source, it will be errored out. So, to avoid that, whenever you see the error message, you can go here, right click business model diagram, selected tables, and you can join the selected tables. There is something called new join here. 
from fact sales to customer you can join click on okay let's close this and now when you check consistency it should be consistent again you see this green symbol here now we were discussing about our customer key keys right now let me delete this key click ok try to check consistency you can see that business model supplier sales is not consistent do you want to market unavailable for queries yes so you can see that logical table DIM customer does not have a properly defined primary key could not load navigation space logical table DIM customer has no defined key so the, if there is no key your RPD consistency will fail. This will not make your PA server to deploy this RPD in the application and develop, uh, make it available for queries. If you don't make it available for queries, that means what? You Even in the application, when you de deploy this RPD and make a new analysis, your OBI server does not throw out any result. It will throw, please fix metadata consistency errors or warnings. It will throw out that error message. Now to avoid that what you can do, you can go here, go to DIM customer, go to keys, give the uh, any name as customer key or something, define the name of the key and from the columns list, select your customer key as the key column, click on OK. Now try to check the consistency, it should be consistent. Business model supplier sales is consi consistent, do you want to mark it as available for queries? Yes. So the rule is yes. So we'll just see what are all the scenarios, how your consistency fails here. So there are some rules here. All logical columns are mapped directly or indirectly to one or more physical columns. So this is the first property. So your logical columns directly or indirectly, it should be coming from your physical column only or your physical database only. Because if you just create a logical column, Without associating, associating it to a proper physical column, that means it is, out, it is an error, right? So directly or maybe indirectly also, this should be coming from a particular physical column, okay? Right. Second one, all logical dimension table should have a logical key. So that is the rule. So DIM customer have a logical key, DIM product has a logical key, DIM time, all dimensions, but fact need not to have a that is still fine. Next, all logical tables have a logical join relationship with another logical table. So, whenever I remove a join between DIM customer and fact sales, the consistency fails. That means you should never attend a table left blank. You should keep every table engaged to other table. So, it should have a join with other table in uh, other table. That means there should be a join between your dimension and fact table. Okay. Next. There should be at this least for the, uh, for the BMM only, right? Yes, yes. Your consistency will never fail in your physical layer. It will uh, start, mostly it will fail in your BMM layer and presentation layers only. Okay? Even in presentation okay. layer it is very, very less. But your BMM layer is the layer where it is concerned. Which even presentation layer is just for display. Right? Whatever you want to okay. make analysis in your application in the front end, only for that you are looking into your business model and map, uh, presentation layer. But your business model and mapping layer is the most crucial layer where you make all the changes. Okay? Fine. Okay. Now, there should not be any circular join relationships in the uh, RPD. Uh, I discussed about circular join before, right? So circular join means Table 1 referencing table 2, table 2 is referencing table 3, table 3 is again referencing table 1 itself. So it goes to a deadlock state. It doesn't know from where to start, right? So it will keep referencing. So if, if there is any that type of join criteria, then our RPD will throw out an error message. Next, there should be a presentation catalog for our business model. So this should be, this is mandatory. If your presentation layer is blank with for a particular business model, if the business model it is not pulled to a presentation as a presentation catalog, then it fails. Okay, now let me create, duplicate this. So I created one more supplier sales. So check consistency. So 
business model supplier sales is not consistent consistent no so what what is the error message it shows business model does not have corresponding subject area so if i just pull it here now see your consistency succeeds is consistent yes okay so your supplier sales whenever you created just in business model and mapping layer and you didn't pull it to presentation layer your consistency is failing because whenever you create a business model obviously you have to pull it to your presentation layer okay otherwise your rpd will, will be in inconsistent state okay delete this i don't want this you can delete it so as soon as you deleted your business model your corresponding subject area is also got deleted okay next so once you check consistency you can deploy this rpd so now this rpd is proper we'll open our enterprise manager deploy this rpd coxa.rpd and we will see we will make a beginning first initial analysis with our rpd and just check how the application is so open our enterprise manager so this log in to this with web logic welcome one so i showed you right there will be three urls one is for console one is for em one is for application so this all mostly will be dealing with your em and your rpd in our package console very very less okay so you should keep restarting our services and all those so mostly will be familiar with your enterprise manager okay so we'll just see for you. so click on business intelligence core application so there is something called deployment as of now i am using one rpd called abc underscore wk underscore ba double zero four five now i want to use our coxa rpd which has been present here so just close this rpd lock and edit the configuration so this is successful browse the rpd so by default it will take you to your path coxa.rpd is your rpd file so open this and the repository password is welcome one provide the repository password two times so apply so until now you made all the changes in offline mode now once i deploy this these changes will come to your application you can make whatever analysis you want based on your rpd so click on apply so you can see that ba0046 coxa underscore this the name is just coxa but ba0046 is the name that got appended by default which is given by your application so ba0046 will get up, uh, appended just click on activate changes so that this new rpd will be take uh, been deployed into your NQS config file and everything and your application will know that you that has to use this RPD for your new analysis. Okay, we'll just see that. This takes a couple of minutes because restarting all the services, deploying all the changes that you did takes some time okay Yeah, yeah, I am not speaking Smith. I am just waiting for the services to start. Okay. So 
so generally this uh, takes one or two minutes but my em is taking more time sometimes it happens with my em so i think given for you guys it should be the same case it will take some time Which one, Smita? Uh, what we can do it in task prompt? You want me to unmute you? I think you can unmute yourself. Uh, like op command, something is there, right? Op start process all something. Uh, that start is for, all yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there, right? That is for starting the when you click on availability, all the five services will be there, right? To start and stop all those services, we we use opm and cdn. Okay. Yeah, even for this uh, to uh, to the changes faster. Uh, if we use that, it will be faster, right? No. Uh, activate. No, no. Activate changes will not use the OPM and CTL. Okay, activate changes will oh. uh, will up update all the corresponding files that BI server uses. Okay. Oh. You can just click on restart all. Yes. No, I did restart all, right? This is like OPM and CTL start all. Okay. This this process will go for OPM and CTL. Okay. So it is still in starting phase. Now if I open analytics, you can see that internal server error message will come because still, still the servers are down. Services are down and still it is in restarting phase. So until it is up and running, your application will not come up. Okay, now application, your BI server is, presentation server is up. So when I click on welcome one, if this logs in, yeah, so my all the services should be up. So you can see that restart all completed successfully. So your coxa.rpd that we developed is properly there. So when I click on new analysis, before I used to see two subject areas, ABC usage tracking and supplier sales. Now I am seeing only one subject area called supplier sales. Click on this and you can only see only four tables. One is customer, time, product and tax sales. And when you select from customer, region, tax sales, dollars, units ordered, and you can go for results. So you can see that it the, all the results will successfully be deployed, uh, displayed from your database. So from your database, all your region information, dollars and units order information is being pulled out. So this is how you de develop your RPD, deploy your RPD, and that see the results in your application. So from here, you have some idea how, how you were uh, from database how you link up till your application right so in the data from your database you pulled all the tables to your physical layer from the physical layer you pulled all the things to your business model mapping layer you renamed it however you want you deleted unwanted columns you made business joins or logical joins you brought all the uh, subject area, entire subject area into your presentation layer, arranged all the columns however you want. So you can even see that however, uh, first see in customer I arrange region, then it is district, then sales rep like that. So the same way region, district, sales rep, customer address and last is root code. So the same way the columns are present in your presentation layer. So, so, so however it is present in your presentation layer, you can see that your columns have been present. 
Now I was telling you about online mode, right? So let me open my B admin tool. Now let me open it in online mode. Now coxa.rpd is there. You should be able to see your coxa.rpd in online mode. So in offline it will ask you which RPD to open. But in online mode you can see that directly coxa.rpd RPD is being open and you can see that region is first root code is last. So whatever is present in your presentation layer similar way your subject area in the application are also present. Region district sales rep and you can see region district sales rep and first customer is there then time product and fax sales. First customer is there then time product and fax sales are there. Okay. And you can see supplier sales has the name and you can see supplier sales, sales has the name. So whatever is there in your presentation layer same thing will get displayed in our subject area in your application also. Okay. Now let me make the changes in online. I won't restart. I need not I need not to restart any. Suppose from DM customer full customer key to, to your table. This will ask you for checking out the objects. Yes, check out. Check in all the changes. It will ask for consistency. It is consistent. Save the changes. Now see that your customer table does not have the customer key. There is something called reload server metadata. Just click on this and open your customer. You can see that your customer key column is present here. I made RPD changes in online mode. I didn't go to my enterprise manager, didn't deploy this, didn't restart any of the service. I just made the changes online and from the server memory directly came to the application. So this is the difference between your offline mode and online mode in your RPD. Okay. So you understood, right? So now I can delete this again. I don't want this. Delete this again. Check in the changes. Yes. Click OK. Save this. Go here. Click on this. Reload server metadata. Go to customer. You should not, you should not be seeing any customer. Fine. So this is how you make changes to your offline mode and online mode for your RPD. And if you make offline mode, you have to deploy and restart all the services. And if you are making it online, you need not to restart any service. Just come to the application. Reload your server metadata. So this is how you develop your RPD and do it. So next class we will see how to handle your snowflake schema. I, I told you right if you have a snowflake schema how do you convert into star and how do you check it all those right. So we will see how to do that okay. So you can just uh, try with different analysis and you can just check it. Next class we will start with managing multiple logical table sources. So we will see how different logical tables, if, the, if a particular table, if a dimension table and dimension table are joined, how to handle that scenario. Now slowly the complexity of your RPD will increase. Okay, Slowly we will bring in multiple tables, different types of tables and different types of analysis. How to create a dimensional hierarchy, how security is being implemented in our RPD and all. Okay? Fine. So today we will wind up our session. So fine. Any questions? We will be able to work now, uh, Janaki, or we need to wait for... No, I don't know why your database is not working. I think it should be working fine. Uh, I'm not sure why it is not working. No, it got corrupted, uh, Janaki. Okay. Uh, instead, I checked it all that. It, it's got corrupted. That's why we are unable to work. Okay. So fine, uh, I should ask my admin, I called him in the morning, uh, I asked him why all the boxes are down. So he told me he'll be reinstalling the database or something in the, all the boxes or maybe he may copy the same virtual machine and paste it. Okay, I'll try to just uh, ask him to delete all the boxes and I'll just ask him to copy my image and place everything for you guys, okay, so that you, do, you won't be having any issues. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Thank you guys. Okay, but start yeah, but start practicing.
today i'll discuss and i'll ask him to send out an email i'll, I'll otherwise i'll call chakri and also tell that uh, uh, what the what the exact issue is okay so you can just start practicing mm -hmm. practice only can help you much than teaching okay yeah okay. thank you okay thank you guys thank you very much okay yeah.